It's never a bad idea to turn a screw backwards until you feel it hump it back down into the thread. Right there. So I think I got it fitting really good now. Now where it locks up there, it's actually down on a woodruff key that's angled in its seat. But that's a beautiful fit. It doesn't run this way, but it fits good this way as well. So, wow. So there's the results of making my own ream, of taking the 9 inch, the gear for the 9 inch, I bored it for the uh, bushing, and I made a sleeve out of the bad gear to increase the diameter of the uh, stem large enough so it would all press in here. So I was able to get this rebuilt. Now I can begin to put the uh, the Ward's Logan lathe back together. All right, I got all ahead of myself, got this thing together without video in it. Um, there's other videos that show how to put the spindles in these uh, Powercraft Logan lathes, um, very similar to a Logan 200. Um, I knocked, I lost the Woodruff key and had to do it twice uh, to get that right. It's almost done. I still got to drive this gear on and tighten the uh, the nut here um, and tighten the set screw. <clears throat> but we're all together in good shape. I've put oil inside the cone pulley. Um, now this bearing here, I didn't have a way to hold the spindle in order to remove the nut that retains the bearing. I, I, I rinsed that bearing out with solvent because the grease was really kind of dry and chunky in it. Um, and then it actually started turning worse. Um, it may have been that the grease that was there was allowing the balls to slide or something, I don't know. But I rinsed those in gasoline, and now the bearing feels beautiful. And then how I regreased it, not having it off to use in a regreaser, is I filled this plastic tube with grease, and I squeezed it down and put it against the race, and drove it in with air and I did that all the way around about two or three laps to get a lot of grease into it and then I've packed grease under this uh, bearing protector here and pushed it on and I'm getting ready to kind of fill this cavity with grease so that when I bolt on the cover um, there'll be just plenty of grease in there to work its way into the bearing. I'm, I'm I'm very certain there's grease in the bearing, but I'm just trying to optimize all of my opportunities to pack the bearing with grease. Now, the spindle bearings are really the only thing that I can tell the grease should be used on here on these lathes. One of the reasons I had to tear this lathe apart and clean it is all of the uh, all of the gears were loaded with grease. Couldn't find my fasteners so I just start putting things away and where I find them of course, right under my nose. Right under my nose. Should get a little, maybe a little squeeze out here. I don't know. Funny, that screw will come up hard against that grease. Look at that, I thought that was seated.
And the last thing is this little bearing protector. Uh oh. My nut fell down into the headstock. To save some of my dirty paper towels, just for such occasions. Is that cheap saving paper towels? I believe these little holes had rubber bumpers in them of some sort. I did find some adhesive here, uh, possibly some silicone somebody had tried to put here and here to stop this from vibrating. So maybe a little rubber bumper, nylon bumper can be fashioned. Sweet! So the order of assembly here is the bull gear, the cone pulley, the cone pulley pinion. There's a spacer here that looks a lot like this part. A large diameter with a small diameter that goes inside the uh, shield, the bearing shield. But, it, but it, it's a narrower, shorter part. And then that goes inside the shield. There's a woodruff key here and our gear. dueling plastic hammers. I hope everybody that watches my channel has at least one plastic hammer, if not more. Pen spanner. I'm pulling in the, uh, the back gear assembly, which is down below here. I'm going to use my gentle impact wrench to tighten this up. None of these gears are meshed, by the way. And I'm holding attention on this. I don't want this pin to come halfway out and mar the hole or the pin. I don't remember what project I bought this wrench for, but I'm on the lookout for them because I use them from time to time on machine tools. There we are. I believe we have a perfect installation. Tightening up this set screws like the last thing on the spindle. Everything's turning smooth and good. This guard is an item I had to replace that was broken on this lathe. It's got a little bit of a thin cross section. The other one I have is broken right there. I like to be able to fix everything, but sometimes it's just cheaper to buy a replacement. Economics. Unlike our wise overlords, people like you and me, we have to live by economics. Economic reality. Boom. Man, that's a part this lathe never had. Looking good. And the gear cover.
Feels so good to see these major pieces going back on. Our catch doesn't catch on the gear guard. I may have the wrong, I may have bought the wrong gear guard for this lathe. The bolt just comes to about right here. It doesn't come into there. <clears throat> Something may need to be fashioned for that. Ah, I've only one screw in there. <laughs> the other ones are in the brush. There's supposed to be four. There's a third one, hurt drop. There's a fourth one. Let's see if I can filter them out. There we go. Four switch plate screws. It's never a bad idea to turn a screw backwards until you feel it hump it back down into the thread. Right there. Yeah, going in a little bit sideways, but these are self tapping screws, and it's probably how it was originally threaded in. Not running yet. So, this is the uh, retainer for the gear cover and notice we've got some chowdered up threads here so if you try to extract this through the casting you're liable to mess up the threads in the casting I believe this is a 5 16 18 here no doubt about it I'm going to try to get a die started on it and see if I can clean it up Yeah, the die's not wobbling, so I think I have it started good. Now, how can I get a hold of the die? So this is a perfect place for some hex dies. Craftsman hex dies. One of these days I'll run across a set of those. Just so I can do projects like this. I've seen a couple other useful reasons to have a set of those dies. I gotta grab this out here. Got a pair of channel locks to hold this, to hold the knurling. But I'm going to uh, do something, hopefully, to avoid fouling up the knurling here. I'm gonna put this Scotch Bright pad here. Try to hold it with that. I need to unthread the knurling. The thumb screw, there we go. And I can hang on to it again. Grab the die. And we are coming through. In fact, we might be able to turn it without a tool now. Oops. There we go. Now I'm going to turn the die around backwards and see if there's just like any more we can clean up. Nope. Now the fellow that's buying this lathe is kind of buying it sight unseen from me, so I want to try to fix every little thing on it I can that it needs. So there you go. There'll still be a few things for him to do. If you own a lathe, believe me, there'll be something you need to do to it.
Join this up a little bit. Amazing what a little bit of Scotch Bride will do. And this is kind of a whey, so I'm going to put whey oil on it. Put some whey oil inside the ram that goes in. Yeah, good. It's all the way around it. Ah, it's going to be a nice lathe. Hope the new owner goes through it piece by piece and puts a nice finish on it because it's definitely worth it. Now. Let's get the shop made handle off of here. And yes, it's the wrong color. I know that. It's the right color on the back side, so from the operator's point of view, it's right. How's that? only get that over the keyway. Get myself a little handle here. Keep the keyway from flipping out of there. I got it. Hmm. I'm going to have to check the uh, slot in the handle. See if there's some debris in there. No, well, that's clean. The key seems to be sitting in there right. Let me, let me see if there's a piece of debris under the key. Seems to be clean. Let's try again. You know, there's a the world. It's a different world today. Back when this handle was originally broken or lost, you probably could only get a new one from the Logan Actuator Company. Nowadays, you have eBay. And lots of availability of used parts at a lower cost. You know, I am going to... I don't think this is the original nut. I tried to get a nut. Let me show you that nut. I tried to get a nut for this. This is a plated nut, which is an original. I tried to get the original nut when I ordered the handle and the guy said he didn't have it. These parts came from a guy in uh, the Chicago area or the Illinois somewhere. And I tried to get a hold of him again to get a few other pieces I wanted to get for this lathe. And his number's no good. And I got to reading about him online, and he got probation for, you know, I was trying to track him down. 
Maybe he's, you know, maybe there's a phone number for him at that address or something. Just couldn't find him. Apparently he's a truck driver. He seemed to have a lot of lathe parts, like this was a hobby or a business of his. When I originally... Wow. When I originally got these parts from him. That does not want to go together. I gotta solve this mechanical problem. The handle doesn't want to go all the way up on the Woodruff key, so we're gonna to have to check this out a little more thoroughly. I can see now I'm gonna to want to get a, uh, a broaching, a small broaching kit too, if I can find one just so I can clean up handles and things like this. Ah, I'm at the end of the thread. That's why I can't drive it on. I need to manufacture a washer.